Here's a GE Mickey Mouse AM clock radio from, I believe, 1971 that we have torn apart on the bench because it's non-operative. It's a five-transistor solid-state chassis. In fact, GE used the same basic chassis in many of their clock radios. The main difference is the standard version had a power transformerless hot chassis design. This one does have a have a power transformer, I guess for isolation purposes, since this set was marketed towards uh, kids. They wanted to make it as safe as possible, I guess, but the chassis looks very much like what's in the standard consumer grade uh, adult, if you will, clock radio version. We're getting noise from the speaker and the volume control works. That tells us that obviously the audio section is working, but when we tune across the AM broadcast band, we receive absolutely no reception. Now whenever I touch my finger to the antenna section, I get interference from the speaker, but still no reception as I turn the tuning dial. So I suspect our, our problem here is most likely the local oscillator is not functioning. So we'll, we'll check that first. I did find a schematic for a similar GE AM radio. This is the hot chassis version, but I think the circuitry is probably close enough to, to get me by on repairing this set. And as I suspected, the local oscillator is not operating. I've checked the voltages on the oscillator mixer transistor. They're okay. The windings of the oscillator coil appear to be good. But all we're getting is a bunch of garbage on the oscilloscope, not what I would expect the local oscillator to look like. So now we'll have to dig into this and find out why the oscillator is not working. Okay, I found a potential problem. R4, which is a 1.5 K ohm resistor, it goes from the emitter of the oscillator and converter transistor to ground. It's this little animal right here, brown, green, red. It's supposed to be 1.5 K ohms. Let's see what it really reads. Well, won't focus, but whatever, you can see 4.17 K ohms. That's very, very, very much so out of tolerance and could very well be what's causing the whole problem. So let's find a 1.5 K ohm resistor and see what happens. Here's the new resistor and it reads 1.48 K, which is what it's supposed to be. Now let's install this in the chassis and see if it makes a difference. Okay, the resistor has been replaced, and I'm now hearing more promising sounds from the speaker. Turn this volume control down. Yeah, that's um, better. Let's like cut off some of these interference-producing sources. And nothing happened. Mm -hmm. And, and we did, uh, when we paid the fee, I, I, went, I had to do it online, and I paid it through a credit card. still may not be quite as perky as it could be, but we're certainly making progress, aren't we? Since that one resistor was so bad out of tolerance, I believe I'm going to spot check the rest of them. Because if one's up in value, there's probably more of them that's up in value. And I'm also going to replace the electrolytic capacitors. This blue one here, I can already see, 
has a little bit of a bump on top of it, so it's probably on its way out. And here's the audio output transistor emitter bypass capacitor. It's supposed to be 100 microfarad. It's reading almost double what it should be reading. So that will obviously have to be replaced. And here we are back together again and working. Lance Gieselman's back was broken, leaving him paralyzed. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors, which most of them read double or more than what their rated value was. And one capacitor, just one of the leads pulled out of it as I was removing it. And replaced that one resistor in the emitter circuit of the converter transistor, and that brought it back to life. Paralyzed veterans, senior... Okay. And all of a sudden... And this is a 71 model, according to the date codes that I found. And the telecron clock movement appears to be working okay. That is only the thrill. And there's one of our gospel stations that is really overdoing it. They're so powerful that they distort the their signals distorted. It's interesting to note that General Electric used this same basic style of clock radio cabinet from the late 50s on up through the early 70s in both tube type and solid state versions. In the early 70s, they came out with this Mickey Mouse transistorized clock radio for children. It's the same basic model, as you can see, as the old tube type sets. The only difference, of course, being the old tube type sets didn't have the novelty Mickey Mouse figures on them. They were just a plain Jane radio. And it's interesting, also interesting to note that when I first got this radio several years ago off of eBay, it worked, and then it sat up for several years, and then mysteriously didn't work. So that emitter resistor apparently jumped up in value just the few years that I had the radio. He's back home. Okay. I want to lay my... Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching and more to come later.